Hello everyone, welcome to this video about osteoarthrosis or osteoarthritis. In this video we're going to talk about the definition, etiology, symptoms, diagnosis and the treatment of the disease. Osteoarthrosis and osteoarthritis are terms that tend to be used interchangeably. Which term is used depends on who you ask. Uh, it is a disabling joint disease that is characterized by non-inflammatory degeneration of the joint complex. The joint complex consists of the articular cartilage, the subchondral bone and the synovium. In this disease, there is a progressive destruction of the joint, which causes progressive reduction in the function of the joint and variable amount of cartilage destruction and bone remodeling. The first risk factor to know is putting excessive stress on the joints. This is very common in some professions like countrymen and professions where you are often in bent positions. Also football players or soccer players for the Americans are, and weightlifters are much more susceptible. The fatter you are, the more stress you tend to put on the weight bearing joints and thereby the quicker you tend to develop arthrosis. There's a tiny bit higher susceptibility to osteoarthrosis by being a woman. It's not a huge difference though. Some underlying diseases can give increased susceptibility to osteoarthrosis. The rheumatological diseases that attack the joint, such as rheumatoid arthritis, is important to know. Also, the metabolic and endocrine diseases, such as hemochromatosis, is very associated. The pain triad is the most important symptom to know. When a patient presents with these symptoms, arthrosis or arthritis has to be suspected. The triad consists of, first, at the start of a movement, such as walking, there is quite a lot of pain. With continued activity, the pain gets reduced, but with extra long activity, the pain gets worse again. When the symptoms first appear, they will progressively get worse over the course of time. Herberden's noduli are nodular thickenings that you can find on the dorsal sides of the DIP or distal interphalangeal joints. They occur more often in women and it's a clear sign that it's most likely an underlying osteoarthrosis. In the early stage of the disease, the joints feel stiff and they can have a reduced range of motion. A crepitus, which is a crackling or popping sound, can also be heard on joint movements. In the late stages of the disease, morning stiffness and constant pain may also arise. When it comes to diagnosis, first, with the objective findings, you can find a hard joint, the Herberden snodoli, and valgus or varus deformation of the knee is very commonly seen. X-ray should always be performed as it can easily show the typical signs of osteoarthrosis. This can also be seen before there is an actual clinical signs of arthrosis. The first sign is that there is a reduced joint space. Uh, this is due to the destruction of the cartilage and the remodeling of the bone. Uh, the space will over time gets narrower due to the remodeling of the bone. Subgondral sclerosis is the second sign, and it is a hardening of the bone just below the cartilage surface. It occurs typically in the later stages of osteoarthrosis, especially in the weight-bearing joints, such as the knee. It looks like a more dense, as in more whiter area, uh, just below the cartilage surface when you look at the x-ray. Osteophytes, they are bony projections that develop by the edges of the joint, and thereby they increase the surface of the joint. Subchondral cysts is the last classical sign of osteoarthrosis. They may be quite hard to see and they are not always present. They are fluid-filled cysts that form near the joint surface due to localized necrosis. If the x-ray is inconclusive and you still have a clinical suspicion of the disease, you can perform an MRI or CT scan in order to find these uh, typical symptoms. Blood tests should also be taken for differential diagnosis. Infectious markers, serum urate and hemoglobin should always be taken. You can also take other typical blood tests as a liver panel and a kidney panel. If there is suspicion of an another disease like rheumatoid arthritis, the appropriate antibody panel should also be performed. For treatment, the treatment mainly focuses on treating symptoms, as in treating pain and the loss of function, and treating the progression of the disease. The main treatment is not pharmacological, but something that the patient has to do him or herself. The main aim is weight loss, and to do this, we can use the DSEA uh, principle. Uh, this is diet, 
smoking reduction or stop, alcohol reduction or stop, and being more active. For treating the pain, the main way is the regular use of peripheral analgesics. NSAIDs like ibuprofen is typically the drug of choice. And remember, if you treat the patient with ibuprofen or any other NSAIDs, and this patient is in risk of developing peptic ulcers, always give them in a combination with a PPI, as in a proton pump inhibitor, uh, as a prophylactic treatment against developing peptic ulcers. Lastly, the last treatment to have in mind is the possibility of injecting glucocorticoids directly into the joint. This is never a long-term treatment and should only be used in severe courses of the disease.